What is 2 times 2? I forgot, and I'm too tired to do multiplication right now. Luckily, I don't have to. We can map this multiplication problem into an addition problem using this table. So 2 goes to 5, and now we have 5 plus 5, which I know, that's 10. Then we just reverse the map from 10 back into 4. Yeah, 2 times 2 is 4. This simple example is a little silly, but more generally, multiplication can be complicated. In this video, we'll see how mapping it into addition can help us do faster computations and to better understand the overall structure of multiplication. Specifically, I'm talking about modular arithmetic. This table maps from multiplication mod 13 into addition mod 12. So for 3 times 5, we map into 8 plus 9, which is 17, but then we need to realize that 17 is congruent to 5 mod 12. Then we map 5 back into 2, and see that 2 is 15 mod 13. I chose this map as an example because addition mod 12 is very familiar to anyone who has used a clock. If we start at 8 o'clock and then 9 hours pass, we will be at 5 o'clock. Clocks work in mod 12. And if we apply that map onto the clock, we now have a visual method for multiplication mod 13. What's 10 times 7? This distance moves 1 to 10, so it must represent multiplying by 10. So we can apply that distance to 7, and we get our result of 5. Nice. Now here's where it gets fun. Clocks like this exist for every natural number. Whatever modulus we pick, we can find a similar map. And the way this works is quite interesting. Let's find the clock for mod 9. It doesn't matter where our first number goes, since you can rotate a clock and it will still work the same. So let's just keep 1 at the top since it's the reference point. 8 squared is 1, so 8 must be halfway around. If we do it twice, we get back to 1. Then 2 cubed is 8, so 2 must be a third of the way to 8. And then multiplying by 2, we get 4, 7, and 5. Next, where should 3 go? 3 can't go on the clock. Why not? Well, let's assume that 3 is somewhere on the clock. What's opposite from it? Let's call it a. This distance multiplies by 3, so 3 times a must be 1 mod 9, which implies that 3a plus some 9b equals 1. But the left side is divisible by 3, and the right is not. This is impossible. 3 can't go on the clock. We'd run into the same problem if we tried putting 6 on the clock. The left side is divisible by 3 because it's the greatest common divisor of 6 and 9. Some k will only fit on the clock if the greatest common divisor of k and 9 is 1. If this is true, we say k is a unit. And going forward, we'll just work with the units, since they have this nice property. They can fit onto a clock. And so this clock does multiplication of the units mod 9. And it's actually complete. These are all of the units mod 9. There are six of them, so they map to addition mod 6. To describe this using group theory, we could say that the units mod 9 are isomorphic to the integers mod 6. Isomorphic meaning that their structures are identical and we can map back and forth between them. And going forward, instead of using z6, I'll represent this as c6. You can think of it as a clock with six points, but typically this represents a six cycle that clock moves in a cycle. So as we saw before, the units mod 13 are isomorphic to a 12 cycle. 
And we might wonder, do the units always form a single cycle? Let's look at U12. There are four units mod 12, so let's try to fit them onto a four cycle. We'll put one on top, then notice that five squared is one, so five must be halfway around. But seven squared is also one, so seven must also be halfway around. The same is true for 11. But we can't put these all in the same position, so we can't use a clock to multiply. But we can represent U12 with two clocks, something like this, where the value is the product across the clocks. So this is 1, 5, 7, and 11. So U12 is not a 4 cycle, it's the product of a 2 cycle and another 2 cycle. And here is the map for that. So for example, to do 7 times 11, we map into 0, 1 and 1, 1, and then we add these pairwise. And then these are 2 cycle, so we add mod 2 to get 1, 0, and that maps back into 5. So U12 is the product of 2 cycles. But why? Can we understand the reason a little better? Let's look at these clocks, and then we'll want to notice that 12 is 3 times 4. If we take U12 mod 3, reduce the clocks mod 3, we notice that the left clock is U3. This is the units mod 3. And then the right clock is redundant. It only has ones, so we can ignore that. Similarly, if we take U12 mod 4, the right clock is U4, and the left clock becomes redundant. And this gives us a much better way of thinking about this. U12 is the product of U3 and U4, where each is represented with its own clock. And U3 is isomorphic to a 2 cycle. U4 is also isomorphic to a 2 cycle. And that is why U12 is the product of two 2 cycles. And we can do this in general. For example, U117 is the product of U9 and U13, since 9 times 13 is 117. And we saw before that U9 is a 6 cycle, and U13 is a 12 cycle, which tells us that U117 is the product of a 6 and 12 cycle. And what's more, we can use this to help us find clocks for U117. So let's bring up our U9 clock and our U13 clock. We can use this to represent every number mod 13, as long as the left clock is all 1 mod 13. We want it to be redundant mod 13. So we just need to adjust this left clock. For example, what should go here? Well, 14 is 5 mod 9, but it's also 1 mod 13. So it fits perfectly. It still works for 5 mod 9 on the clock, but it's redundant for the right clock. So let's replace that with 14. Now, what should go here? We want something that's 7 mod 9 and 1 mod 13. And we could do a calculation to find this, but we don't actually have to. We just notice that this distance multiplies by 14, so we can multiply again by 14 to get the following number, which is 14 squared, 196. And then we're in mod 117, so we can reduce that to 79. And to fill out the rest of the clock, we just need to multiply again by 14 to get 53, 40, 92, and then back to 1. And so now this left clock is complete. It's all 1 mod 13, but it works the same mod 9 as it did before. And we were able to do this pretty quickly because 14 is a generator. Multiplying by 14 generates every point on this clock. So we really just need to find 14 and then all of the rest of the numbers follow. So we can use this technique for the clock on the right. We want this to be all 1 mod 9, so it's redundant to the left clock. And to make this clock, let's find a generator. For example, here, what should replace the 6? 
Well, 19 is 6 mod 13, and 19 is also 1 mod 9, so that works perfectly. Let's put 19 there, and then we get the rest of the points on this clock by multiplying by 19. Great, now we're done. This is a representation for the units mod 117. And this split into 9 and 13 can also help us find the positions for any number. For example, how do we represent 23? Well, 23 is 5 mod 9, and so is 14. So 23 should be at the 14 position on this clock. And then 23 is 10 mod 13, so it should be at the 10 position on this clock. So our representation for 23 is 14 times 10. And 140 is 23 mod 117. So we were able to use U9 and 13 to build U117. And we can do this in general. If we have any UA and UB, we can use them to build UAB, just so long as A and B are co-prime, if they have a greatest common divisor of 1. And let's walk through why this is the case. Let's say we have a clock for UA and it has a generator G. We want to adjust this to be 1 mod B so that this clock is redundant to the UB clock. Well, the Chinese remainder theorem tells us that since A and B are co-prime, there is some G star such that G star is G mod A and G star is 1 mod B. So we can replace G with this new G star and it will generate a clock that still works for UA, but now is all 1 mod B, which is exactly what we're looking for. And if we have a clock for UB with a generator H, we want to adjust this to all be 1 mod A. And again, by the Chinese remainder theorem, we can find some H star that will similarly generate a new UB. And so this gives us a construction for UAB. So the structure of any UAB is determined by UA and UB. We can break it down into smaller pieces. But we don't have to do this with just two pieces. We could continue to ABC and ABCD. We just have to keep in mind that A, B, C, and D are all co-prime with each other. So for example, U of 6,600 is made up of U8, U3, U25, and U11. And we notice that this is all based on the prime factorization of 6,600. And so given any UN, we can break it down into its prime powers. Which means that in order to understand the structure of any UN, we just need to understand the structure of prime powers. And prime powers only need one cycle. Let's look at some examples. U3 is a two cycle. U9 is a six cycle. U27 is an 18 cycle. And U81 is a 54 cycle. We start with two, and then at each step, multiply by three. We see something similar with the powers of five. We start with four, and then multiply by 5. And this pattern follows in general. U of p to the r is a cycle of size p minus 1 times p to the r minus 1. We start with p minus 1 and then continue multiplying by p. But unfortunately this only works when p is odd. 2 works a little bit different. U of 2 is a 1 cycle. It only has one unit, so it's just trivial. And then u of 4 is a 2 cycle. And then u of 8 is the product of a 2 and a 2 cycle. u of 16 is a 2 and a 4 cycle. And then a 2 and an 8 cycle. And then a 2 and a 16 cycle. And as we continue, that cycle on the right keeps multiplying by 2. So we could write this generally uh, in this form, where r is greater than 2. And so taking these three statements, along with the one from before where p is odd, this completely determines the structure of any u to the n. The proofs for these facts are somewhat involved, so I'm not going to cover them here. 
but there are some links in the description if you want to read about that yourself. And this is kind of abstract, so let's apply these a little bit. We just saw that u8 is a 2 cycle times a 2 cycle. But earlier we saw the same was true for u12. So because these are the same, u8 is isomorphic to u12. They have the exact same structure, and we can map between them just by changing 3 to 11. For another example, u10 is u5 times u2. And u5 is a 4 cycle, u2 is a 1 cycle, but that 1 cycle is trivial. It doesn't hold any information. So we can just kind of ignore these, and we see that u10 is isomorphic to u5, which is something that I showed in my previous video about applying this to Rubik's cubes. And this works more generally. If we have any k where k is odd, then u2k will be the product of uk and u2, and since u2 is trivial, we can ignore it, and so u of any odd number is isomorphic to its double. As a final example, u39 is u3 times u13, u3 is a 2 cycle, and u13 is a 12 cycle, and then u35 is u7 times u5, where u7 is a 6 cycle and u5 is a 4 cycle. But we can split that 12 cycle into a 3 and 4, and then bring down the 2 cycle, and then use the 2 and 3 to construct the 6 cycle and bring down the 4 cycle. And so sometimes there's more than one way to represent the same product of cycles, and because of this, u39 is isomorphic to u35. It may not appear so at first, but it turns out they're the same. And so as an exercise, maybe try to find a map between them. We also notice that they're both odd. So using the fact from before, they're also isomorphic to u78 and u70. All four of these groups behave the exact same way. And there are a lot more interesting results like this, um, which I will be covering in my next video. So stay tuned for that, and until then, thanks for watching.